Investors succeed by finding asymmetries and exploiting them. Hedge funds fight for asymmetric information advantage. They will buy satellite imaging of parking lots to estimate customer numbers. The venture capital model is also based on asymmetry, asymmetric risk and reward. Asymmetries are incredibly powerful, and you've probably heard of these two, but there's a deeper asymmetry behind not only investing, but also war, politics, business, technology, and thermodynamics. I'm talking about entropy, the force that is pulling the world towards disorder. You already know the two laws of thermodynamics, whether you realize it or not. The first law is that energy is neither created nor destroyed. Our universe started with a bang and was set in motion with a finite, specific, and vast amount of energy. The early universe was lumpy, and those lumps formed stars, which formed planets and galaxies and black holes, and eventually, humans. Just as you can't cook food with room temperature water, the universe would be inert if it was fully uniform. A physicist would describe the state of the early, lumpy, non-uniform universe as low entropy. The second law of thermodynamics says that entropy is always increasing, that the universe is smoothing out over time. If you take a pot of boiling water off the stove, the water inside will slowly cool down until it reaches room temperature. Similarly, our sun is constantly shedding heat, and when the fuel at its core runs out, our solar system will slowly fade into the freezing cold background temperature of the rest of the universe. But here's an amazing fact. There is no physical basis for entropy. There's no entropy particles, there's no entropy waves, there's no entropy gradients, really anything that would physically mandate entropy to rise. Entropy is just a statistical phenomenon. Because there are more ways for something to be disorderly than there are for it to be orderly, we'd expect things to get more chaotic over time. For example, the air that I'm breathing in this room right now is 21% oxygen. It is theoretically possible that all of that oxygen would rise to the ceiling out of range of me breathing it, and I would suffocate to death. But I don't need to worry because there's only one configuration in which all of the oxygen is at the ceiling. There are trillions and trillions of combinations of atoms in this room where the oxygen is evenly mixed, but only one where it's all at the ceiling. So probabilistically, I can be pretty safe. Entropy means that disorder is more likely and easier to maintain than order. Once you understand this asymmetry, you'll see it everywhere around you. The 9-11 terrorist attacks cost Al-Qaeda almost nothing to perpetrate. They paid for plane tickets, false documents, box cutters. The official estimate is that the attacks were carried out for less than $500,000, but they caused an estimated $40 billion of damages to New York City and the Pentagon. The United States immediately set out to ensure that such an attack could never again succeed, and they spent trillions of dollars doing so, even without counting the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. The TSA was founded in November 2001 and has spent about $135 billion securing the nation's airports. The Department of Homeland Security was founded shortly thereafter and has spent an estimated $1.1 trillion keeping Americans safe from future attacks. The reason for this incredible asymmetry between a $500,000 attack and a trillion dollar response is entropy. The terrorists were fighting on the side of disorder and the United States was trying to impose order. To cause disorder at an airport required just 19 people to make it through security with box cutters. To establish order and ensure that nobody could do so in the future required the TSA to vet all of the nearly 1 billion yearly air travelers in the United States. Destruction is also just plain old easier than creation. It took seven years to build the World Trade Centers, but less than two hours for them to come tumbling down after being struck by the planes. That's entropy and asymmetry at work. These asymmetries are also present in the business world. There's the hackneyed example of the Fortune 500 and how all the companies turn over, but a more compelling example of entropy in business comes from intellectual property protection. New inventions are usually closely held secrets. Take, for instance, self-driving cars, which are now acting as robo-taxis in my hometown of San Francisco. Even six years ago, self-driving technology was still very nascent, with behemoth companies like Google and Uber racing to become the first to harness the tech for a commercial application. In those early days, Google was clearly the leader. But when Google engineer Anthony Lewandowski decided to leave Google for Uber and took some of his colleagues and allegedly some LiDAR designs with him, it was clear that Google's secrets were doomed to surrender to the law of entropy. 
This story plays out with every technology. Just because companies want to maintain order and keep their inventions within their walls doesn't mean they will succeed. And in fact, entropy means that they usually won't. Look at SpaceX as an example. They created an orbital class rocket that could land, and now there are multiple rocket companies founded by SpaceX alumni that are trying to do the same. Knowledge wants to be free and will be free due to the power of entropy. Entropy is all around us, and it offers asymmetric advantage to those who are willing to fight on the side of disorder. But in my book, we need to be fighting on the side of order. Building things is very hard, and criticizing things is very easy. You just sit on the sidelines and lob bombs, but that doesn't build new technology that doesn't move our world forward. And even though entropy is based on thermodynamics, which seems like a pretty unstoppable foe, thermodynamics itself actually gives us a loophole. The second law of thermodynamics actually says that entropy increases in a closed system. But the world isn't a closed system. We're being constantly bombarded from energy by the sun. We can capture this energy and we can harness it to create our own order. So as a society, let's choose to reward the builders who create order from chaos rather than the folks that tear that order down. Let's cheer on the speakers who take a stand and organize information for others, not the detractors who jeer from the audience. And let's support the warriors who are in the arena fighting against entropy. They deserve to win.